This is the Sarma TST CP15 Combat Backpack. I've had it for about six months now. I think I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Verusta Lika for sending me the Sarma CP15 Combat Backpack so that I could share it with you. So I didn't ask for this. In fact, uh, Verusta Lika offered it to me, and uh, I wasn't sure at first it was going to be something I would like because it's not a big backpack, as you'll see, but I accept it. And uh, wow, the quality of this thing is just outstanding, as I'll show you in a minute. I've had it for about six months, as I say, but honestly, I have not taken it out near as often as I would have liked to have. Now, having said that, I do take it out a lot. I just don't take it out on days that I'm recording videos because it's, like I said, a small backpack, 15 liters. That's what the CP stands for, CP15 stands for. And I usually have a lot more gear, camera gear, uh, things that I'm testing that have to go out with me. But if I'm out on a day hike and I actually use this traveling over the summer, uh, then this really is where it shines. But today it's just a shorter hike. I've only got this and one other thing that I want to review. So I uh, made a good day for bringing it out. Okay, so what I thought we'd do is I'd just focus in on it a little bit so that you can get some detailed close-ups of it as I give you the specifications. And I'll give you all the key features, what makes this bag special. And uh, yeah, then I'll give you my thoughts on using it. All right, just before I get into the specifications and key features and all the things that make this bag so special, I just want to mention this is not going to be a loadout video. I'm not going to go into any detail with about the things that I have packed in it. And the reason being is this is not the way I would pack if I was just going out for a day for a scouting hike or a day out by myself next to the lakes type of thing. Um, and the things I brought today are things that I needed for recording, like my camera gear and my tripod and things like that. So it's a little bit different than a normal backpacking loader would be. So let's get started with this. Let's go into the specifications for it and uh, then we'll get into its key features. So I will be putting all the information I'm giving you now in the video description below for your reference, but let's just start. Okay, so height top to bottom 17 inches width side to side 9.5 inches depth front to back 6 inches and that in metric would be 44 centimeters by 24 centimeters by 15 centimeters the volume of this bag is 15 liters or 915 cubic inches now the thing is it seems like a much bigger bag and part of the reason is is because you can get so much strapped on to the outside with all the pals webbing that I'll show you but uh, 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 yeah, I'll have another comment about that in a minute. So the weight is 950 grams, so just over two pounds, 33.4 ounces. The materials used in this are Finnish mil-spec materials, including 1000D Cordura. This is made in the European Union for uh, in cooperation with Finn Savota, and it does come with a 12-month warranty. So basically, this is a military backpack made for public or military use. And I guess what that says to me right off the top is outstanding, and this is, gets to be an overused term, but really it applies, bomb-proof. This thing is just I, short of indestructible. Not that I've torture tested it, but I've had a few things jammed in here that I thought I'd never get the zippers closed on, and it was no problem at all. I'm going to show you again all the features of this. Uh, probably people are right now are saying, well, is it waterproof? Yes or no? It's water resistant. And I would say it's waterproof with, except for the fact that it has an, a zipper. Now, that zipper is tight to the bag, and it does have a uh, cover over it. So it would probably keep everything, all your contents dry in a reasonable amount of rain. But if you're out in extended rain, this is not like a dry bag that's rubberized material. It is vulcanized in the inside, but again, I'll get to that. So let's go through the key features. And I figure the best way to do that is to start with the suspension. Then I'll go with the features on the outside of the bag. And then I'll go with the features on the inside of the bag. So as I mentioned, the suspension. Now, here's the thing. Being a military bag, it is minimalist, in meaning that this is not a super comfy, super puffy shoulder strap type of bag. In fact, this bag can come as an option without any shoulder straps. And why would they sell it like that? 
metal D-rings right up here, matching ones at the bottom. So this can actually be attached to a larger combat loadout so that you don't have to use the shoulder straps at all. In fact, when mine arrived, the shoulder straps did come with it, but they weren't on it. I actually put the shoulder straps on. I mean, easy enough, as you'll see when you get a little closer into the detail. But the comment on the shoulder straps is, is the padding is minimal. There's a little tiny bit, but not a whole lot. But it is super tough, super tough. Now, you really don't need a whole lot of padding on this. In fact, I think padding would kind of get in the way, make it a little uncomfortable in terms of getting sweaty over time. The deal is with this is that this is not going to twist up, roll up on your shoulder, press into your shoulders because of that minimalist, very firm type of padding on it. And honestly, unless you're really overloading the bag, this is gonna be more than enough for comfort's sake. So as I mentioned, the straps are removable. You can see the strap up here, the buckle up here, and at the bottom, you actually figure eight it through the D-ring at the bottom right there. Now, the straps do come with uh, webbing down the center so that you can attach things to it. I have a sternum strap on mine. By the way, this is an option. It didn't come with this bag. It is made by Sarma. You can see it has a slightly different color. And I asked Verustalika if they would send one with the bag because I'm a big fan of sternum straps straps and I'll explain in a few minutes the, my reasoning for that but yeah so you just need to know that if uh, you want one if you like wearing sternum straps you need to buy that as an option so once again shoulder straps really super bomb proof the strap extensions are long they really are much longer than they need to be and I guess the benefit of that is if you're wearing a lot of clothing like winter loadout type of thing or other uh, load-bearing gear on you and you you need the extra length that the straps provide then it's there and then it gives you the velcro wrap-ups to shorten and get them kind of out of the way so you can roll this up and then fold the velcro over and kind of minimize the amount of straps that are hanging and floating one other thing and this is very much something you would see on a combat backpack and this is a side release buckle sometimes referred to as a fast x buckle military gray and what this is all about is if you had to ditch your bag in a hurry in a combat situation then you just pull those uh, push the, the sides of the buckle and the backpack will fall away from your shoulders to the ground and then you're free to move without the backpack on so that's a feature common to a lot of military backpacks it's not something I would need to use a lot but I suppose it's nice that if I did fall and I uh, you know struggled and let's say I went through the ice or on into the water I could ditch the bag in a hurry without having to struggle too much to get it off of my shoulders all right so that is the shoulder straps there is a waist strap but what you need to know about the waist strap is it's not a load-bearing waist strap. This does not take the weight off of your shoulders the way the big puffy ones that ride up on your hips do. This is a stabilizing strap. So it's not going to, well, it does a little bit. If you tighten it really snug it down, it does seem to lift some of the weight off your shoulders, but not much at all. High quality buckles and adjustable on both sides. And the nice thing about this, if you like it and if you're going through rough terrain and you do want that stabilizing, then it's there. If you don't like it you can take it apart and you can slide it in through the bottom of the pack here two little slots right here where you can take the strap and get it out of the way so it's not dangling free uh, around your legs so that's the story on that okay so that is the suspension system very minimal but very effective i suppose this is also considered part of the suspension system which is the grab handle heavy duty webbing fold it over sewn together so you get a very heavy duty hand grab here you can grab this bag and uh, you know throw the bag around i guess if you felt the need to but it's certainly strong enough for that interesting feature on the bag and this is on both sides is this part this extension of the handle so that you see it has a uh, male female velcro or hook and loop material here with a port through here so that port is identified as two things it can be either a hydration hose if you want to use it for that reason and by the way it's the same on both sides both sides have that same thing or an antenna if you look if you're carrying a large uh, military type of radio then you can bring the antenna out through there. Okay, so that is the suspension. Now we're gonna go over the outside of the bag. So all the, all the way around the bag, you can see Powell's webbing on all sides, so on each side and as well as the front and on the bottom. And you can see what I've done here is that, well, on the bottom you can see, I just have a set of straps. I carried a, a Petromax 
kettle, kind of the storm kettle in this today, so that's what I used it for, but it could be used for a uh, blanket, I guess, ground mat, or just about anything else. A lot of the times on my packs, I use this for carrying my tripod, the one that the camera's sitting on right now. Today, it was for something else that I'll be reviewing. These straps did not come with the pack. They came off as something else, but you can see there's lots of places you can put straps and be on there very, very snugly. The, so you have that, uh, as I said, a pals webbing all the way around for infinite amount of things that you can customize your bag doing. I do have a comment on that, which I'll get to shortly. Huge piece of, of loop up here, the female side of the Velcro, so that you can put everything from an identifying patch to a morale patch to, I don't know, whatever else you want to put up there, there that is there. That's repeated inside, as you'll see in a moment. And these are compression straps on each side. There are four, two to a side. But what's unique about these compression straps, they have these, what's referred to as a G hook. I guess that's figurative enough. I guess it makes sense. That you can hook into any one of the PALS webbing and then snug down and bring your pack in tighter to make sure everything is not moving all over the place. And uh, it helps to keep anything that you have on the side of your bag also uh, stays there so it's not flopping all over the side. Now, I mentioned a minute ago about attaching things to the outside of the bag. So I have just a couple of things attached to mine. First and foremost, and this was as much a way of an, as an example, I had the room I could have tucked this inside. That's my first aid kit. It's just a, a little uh, PALS Molly compatible uh, pouch that I geared up as a first aid kit. It sits on the outside of the pack. It's there in case I need it. And you know, that happens from time to time that you do need your first aid kit. You don't want to be dumping your bag out to get to it. There's mine on the side little, uh, I forget what these are called, griffin locks maybe? There's another name for it, but they're designed for going on pals and molly webbing as well, and that's just what I have my uh, gloves attached to on that side. And I did have a water bottle on this side that I'm going to show you. It is a water bottle pouch that folds up on itself very, very small. And you know what? It's just not up to the task that I put it in today. It's a full bottle of water. Under that weight, it actually came off the side of the pack. I will be, I do have others. I was just looking for something very minimal that I could put a small water bottle in. But uh, yeah, at least this is something that I could put on the side of it. I'm likely going to just transfer this down to the waist belt, a little bit easier to get a hold of anyway. So I'll just put that out of the way. All right, now there is one more feature on the outside of the bag that is really important, but to really get an appreciation for it, you have to see its counterpart on the inside of the bag. And that is this pocket right here. So there is a pocket, and this is the side that fits, it lays against your back, that goes the full length of the bag. It's a big, wide open pocket. And down inside that pocket on the insides of the panel is a, a I don't want to call it a bellows, a, a pleat, I guess, that folds inwards so that it makes, expands the room that this pocket has into the backpack. So you can put some pretty large items down inside here, but instead of having them stick into your back, they move inwards as long as you've left room inside of your backpack. Now, what would you want to put in there? Well, I don't know. Oh, I should show you this. This did not come with the backpack. This is just a piece of thin foam that I put down in the inside of that back area. It's there in case I don't, don't bring my sit, sitting pad with me or a kneeling pad, or in a lot of the case really, just to give my back a little bit of protection from anything that's got a pokey edge on the inside of the backpack. So what is something that you can drop down in there maybe that you want to get at in a hurry? Well, maybe your hatchet. Today, I carried this large knife. It just dropped right down inside, it disappeared, but I knew I'd have instant access to it for any needs that I have. And it didn't feel like it was pushing out against my back because of the way the pleat works towards the inside. So that's a really key feature. Man, this thing is, this thing is just plain rugged to say the least. All right, now let's get to the inside of the bag. Okay, how am I gonna do this? First, undo all the compression straps or at least the top ones. One, two, so there is a heavy duty zipper running all the way around the bag. It doesn't, it isn't marked YKK like you might think it is, but it is, uh, 
Uh, no, I don't see any markings on it at all to indicate what the branding is. But as I said, it's Finnish mil, mil spec quality. So I have no question about the durability of it is. And it, it just like, if you just grab that and rip it, you can guarantee that this, the zipper is not going to bind up or break on you. So if you really had to get into your bag in a hurry, it's going to go, you know, the zipper is going to open up dependably for you. Now, here's the first thing I want to show you inside of the bag. Can you see this? It's like a vulcanized material directly to the outside of the bag. This is why I said it's mostly waterproof. You know, I'd go so far as to say it is waterproof, but uh, with a, a zipper, you know, water can get in. It's not a roll top dry bag, as I mentioned, but the water's not going, any water landing on the outside of the bag is not going to come through here. Theoretically, I suppose it could come through at the stitch points, but you know what, unless I'm going swimming, I really don't see myself getting my inside materials wet inside of here. All right, so I have a few things inside of the bag that I'm just going to pull out and drop. My poncho, notebook, toiletry bag, saw, couple of pieces of wood. So that's everything I had. Oh, that's not quite everything I had in my bag. I'll show you in a second what else I have in here. But here's what I wanted to show you on the inside of the bag. Look at the Velcro. This is the female side of the Velcro or the loop side of Velcro and or hook and loop as it's also referred to so that you can customize anything that has the Velcro or the other, the hook side, you can put against the back of your backpack anywhere to customize its location. I guess in a combat situation, if you're not wearing your, your sidearm on your person, you know, uh, accessible, you could put it in here. Any small, maybe a med pack instead of the one I have here that hooks on with the straps, you could put anywhere down here. Things that you just don't want floating around that you want to give them a location so you know exactly where they are. It does help to centralize things as well so that you can kind of, you know, balance the weight side to side. Now, Here's the other thing. Remember that pleat I called it? There's the inside of the pleat. Let me just reach into the backpack to show you how that pleat works. So I did say you can drop something down inside from the back and that pleat kind of opens up and allows you to get some huge, huge items down inside behind that material behind that material so it's not affecting anything inside of your bag. Maybe it's something very wet that you want to drop in but keep the interior of your bag dry as well. You could also, there are loops up here, three of them. So if you had things that you want to have hang down here, maybe put another G-ring on or a carabiner on, drop something down inside the bag. Hydration bladder could go down inside there. Uh, yeah, so those are things that you could use to uh, customize your bag a little bit further. Here's another feature worth seeing. All the seams. That's that's not just tape. That's heavy duty webbing. That's the same webbing as the shoulder straps that are used to secure the seams all the way around. It's just well, it's military, I guess is the best way to say it. It is sold as being a military combat backpack, but the civilian use of this, uh, well, it does come in a few colors. It does come, I think it, it does come in black. I'm trying to think if it came in a beige or, or sandy color. It does come in camel as well, but I chose to get it in the green, pretty neutral. Nothing, you know, too standoutish, and black is just a little bit too dark for me. But uh, yeah, great bag. Now, those are all the features to share with you. What I want to talk about now, and, and I am going to put it on and show you what it looks like on my back, but what I want to talk about it now is my experiences using it. All right, so here's my first caution for when you get it. You can jam pack this thing full of the heaviest materials possible. And if you can get the zipper closed, then there's no way you're going to damage the bag. The problem is carrying it because those straps are only so thick and there's only so much room in the pack that you're going to find that if you overload it, and you probably could, that it's not going to be comfortable. Not because the bag is not designed to carry that weight or that, uh, that toughness, it's just that it's going to overload the, the ability of the suspension to be comfortable on your shoulders. You can do that not only by putting things inside the bag, but if you put all kinds of pouches and things all over the outside of the bag, then same thing happens. And the other thing that can happen quite easily, it's called barreling. Because this does not have a rigid form to it. I suppose you could put a piece of hard plastic down there and get a rigid form to it. But if because it does not have a rigid form to it, if you put a lot of things in the bag, then the center of the bag barrels out like that. I hope that's doing a good job of demonstrating what it might look if you have too much stuff down inside. 
that's going to ride against your spine and the, the bag is just going to rock back and forth and you're not going to be comfortable and it's not going to be stable. So I guess what I'm saying is just be realistic. Be cautious about load, overloading your bag. Despite the fact that you can attach all kinds of stuff to it, uh, resist the urge. Go for a bigger backpack or a shoulder bag to, to go with just to give you a little bit more capacity if you really need it. So those are my cautions. Now, here's what I want to say about the shoulder strap and then we'll wrap this portion of the video up. The uh, sternum strap. I asked for a sternum strap. I use them on all my backpacks. A lot of people don't and that's fine. A lot of people don't use the waist belt either and that's fine. It's up to you. But here's what I have found with a, with a sternum strap. What it will do for me is, and I'll show it again when I get it on, is it will pull the shoulder straps away from my shoulders. Now, I have advanced arthritis in both my shoulders for so many years of work and when a shoulder bag pushes into the rotator cuff it gets uncomfortable really fast especially if it's not a pack that has a suspension that lifts it off of my shoulders and carries the weight around my waist so a bag like this will want to lay on your shoulders and pull back and if you're in my condition it can get uncomfortable having a sternum strap helps to pull the straps away from your shoulders in towards the center. Yes, it's over your collarbone, but you're better able to uh, bear the weight there. So that's what I wanted to say. But I guess what I can do now is I'm going to load a few things up in the backpack and show you what it looks like on me. Oh, one key feature I almost failed to show you, and that is the organization pouches. So on this portion of the backpack on the inside are two large web pouches with zippers on them that you can contain things in. So obviously in the top one, that's where I have my cell phone and my wallet and my keys and that type of thing. And in the bottom one for me today, this is where I put my notes that I'm going to be using for making videos. But you know, you can put anything else you want, any other small items. They're going to be uh, organized in those two pockets there. All right, now let me put the bag on. All right, just before I stand back and do a 360 for you, I just wanted to show you the sternum strap again. So it is adjustable, but it's not as uh, minutely adjustable as, say, some on the better, uh, more commercial public backpacks are. It has specific spots that you can adjust it to, but I'm sure there's one that will fit most people's frames. So you can see what I have here and the reason why I like this. This pulls the strap away from the edge of my shoulders and just makes it more comfortable. I get a little bit more maneuverable. Not necessary. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you don't need it. And that's fine. You don't have to have it. I find it a real benefit in having it. All right, let me just back up here and hopefully you can get a good 360 of it. So I have the waist belt on. Again, it is not load bearing. It is just stability to keep the pack from flopping around a little bit. Turn and uh, I haven't reloaded everything in the backpack that I originally had in it. Well, the camera, for instance, sitting on the tripod again on the tree there and all of its associated gear I haven't put back in, but I just wanted to give you an idea. It is nice in that it rides right at my belt level on the bottom, not unless you have something strapped to it, of course. And uh, it just, I get a whole lot of sense of freedom of movement considering some of the backpacks I normally carry with this thing. All right, I want to wrap this video up with just a few closing comments. So I just want to put this out there. This is an expensive backpack. It is not a budget backpack. It is not for everyone. I'm not recommending that everybody go out and get one of these bags. If you want and need a really tough, really durable bag, then yes, take a look at this. This is a lifetime investment. It is made with no frills. It has the ability to be refined and customized by adding things to the outside as well as where the Velcro and those other things are on the inside. But it doesn't have all the refinements a commercial uh, backpacker's bag might have but it's going to outlast all of them. It doesn't matter. This is made to finish military grade specifications. I just don't think you can get a better bag for the money. When I say the money, it's close to $300 Canadian when you include the shipping. So again, it's not a budget backpack. I'm glad I have it and I want to thank Verustalika to send it to me. I don't know that I would have invested this type of money for myself. Having said that, I'm getting really spoiled by having it because it is that nice. Okay, I guess that's all I can say about the bag today. I will be putting all the specifications and the links to where you can take another look at this bag in the video description below. I open it up to you for comments or questions in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.